What were the main findings of this study that you would like to bring to people's attention? Yeah, their their main uh, or primary outcomes here were that those with the highest butter intake, again, after adjusting for for, uh, confounding variables, uh, was associated with a 15% higher risk of mortality compared to those with the lowest intake. And for reference, the highest intake was roughly a tablespoon, maybe just under a tablespoon per day. Um, now each 10 grams or, or roughly two teaspoons because they did what's called a dose response was associated with a 7% higher risk. If you wanted to get a little bit more precise with dosing. It's, it's interesting just to pause you there that 10 grams in this study was the kind of the high intake of butter. But if, if we were to think about, I mean, at least what I see on social media now from people adopting a kind of animal-based or carnival-style diet, it looks like there are a number of people that are consuming a lot more butter than that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Uh, there, there's people going way, way beyond that. I also just want to note that higher butter consumption, um, again, about 10 grams, so that's roughly two teaspoons, uh, was associated with a 12% higher risk of cancer mortality, so risk of dying due to cancer specifically. Um Now, if we move on to plant oils as a whole, so this includes olive oil, those with the highest intake actually had a 16% lower risk of mortality, uh, and that was about one and a half or so tablespoons a day. Um, And each 10 grams, so two teaspoons, uh, was associated with a 13% lower risk. So pretty substantial benefit there. Um, each 10 grams was also associated with an 11% lower risk of cancer mortality and a 6% lower risk of cardiovascular disease mortality. So across the board, we're seeing benefit here. That was plant-based oils altogether? With olive, yes, altogether. So it's, uh, I have the list here. It's corn, safflower, soybean, canola, and olive were the specific ones they named. And then they looked at some of those oils separately, right? Yes, yes. And actually, but before that, just to note, plant oils minus olives, so just those other four together, um, the highest intake was associated with an 8% reduction in risk um, of total mortality, and each 10 grams was associated with a 12% lower risk. So uh, pretty, pretty much the same, actually, if you look at the 10-gram dose as the plant oils as a whole. Um, And then, yeah, when they looked at individual oils, canola, soybean, and olive oil were all individually associated with reductions in risk of mortality. And what about the other plant-based oils? Um, They were non-significant. I can pull them up here, but uh, but, yeah, the results just weren't statistically significant. Whether or not there is some level of benefit, like if I look at safflower, I mean, the results suggest there very much could have been a benefit, but it was not statistically significant. And the confidence interval was very wide, which uh, to to those listening um, suggests that the data may not have been very precise. And I suspect that's because the high intake was actually relatively low. It was like a teaspoon. So there just weren't a lot of people consuming enough to maybe see a clear benefit there um, if there was going to be. Um, And then corn oil, I would say more or less the same, pretty wide confidence interval, pretty low intake as a whole. Um, so, so that would probably explain those results. So was there any results or data from this paper that could help kind of someone decide what type of plant-based oil to perhaps buy at the grocery store or cook with? Did one come out on top? If we look at the results for olive, um, soybean and, um, and canola, if we just go on the magnitude of reduction of risk, and I want to be very clear there's sort of a range of potential values here. I don't want to say that this is absolutely the best one, but based on just the the um, the stats that we see here, the canola oil actually may have been the best if they're matched for dose. Um, olive oil and soybean oil were very similar, both also beneficial. Um, but yeah, canola may have even come out on top. What do you think the the main biological mechanisms are that might explain? these results? Is it purely or mostly about the saturated versus unsaturated fats? That's a huge part for sure. And if we look at something like canola, the fact that it's uh, more rich in some of those polyunsaturated fats, especially the ALA, the omega-3 fat, like that could very well be a factor there. Um, And then with olive oil, depending on the type, I mean, you have to look at the polyphenol content as well, if that plays a role um, as far as arterial function and whatnot. Um, so it, it's hard to pinpoint exactly which mechanisms are contributing and to what degree, but we can we can definitely uh, conclude that the reduction in saturated fat and increase in the unsaturated fats is playing a role there. Ah, oh, Matt, 
You can you can you can sell me on olive oil though. It's a ro- more of a romantic story. It's but canola oil is it's it's industrially processed. I mean, it has such a bad name, right? You must you must find this like pushing a boulder uphill when you're when you're sharing information online about canola oil or other seed oils and suggesting that these oils are in fact health promoting they're not toxic what's that experience been like for you oh i mean it's it's all the time anytime i post something like that uh i get comments saying i've sold out I, to who i don't know but i've sold out to someone um no one's paying me at this point i, I wish um but uh yeah like I'll, I'll get all sorts of comments about how it's toxic or um how you know i don't know what i'm talking about it, it, what's really funny is i'll have some people who often comment on my content uh, sort of praising what i'm doing but then when it comes to this topic all of a sudden i'm wrong about everything <laughs> you know it's it's that uh, back and forth so yeah i mean it, it's it's a uphill battle for sure and at the end of the day look if, if well, for whatever reason you don't want to consume canola or soybean or whatever go for olive oil it's a fine option i i just don't think it's necessarily better than these other options and how would you say the findings of this study fit within the context of of the wider body of literature on this topic does it does this paper add anything new or change any of your your current views or solidify them i mean maybe solidify a little bit further but honestly it doesn't really change much and that's actually something i thought was surprising uh, to hear in some of the commentary is i had people commenting that you know today um, these oils are beneficial yesterday. Those oils are beneficial the day before butter was beneficial and it's like it's all over the place And really it hasn't been like this is super consistent stuff here. We we've known through <laughs> I mean, it really is at the end of the day. I mean, we have long-term randomized controlled trials like the LA veterans um, uh, I know people like to cite a couple other ones I don't know how much you want to get into that but we have meta-analyses by Hooper on randomized controlled trials showing that replacing saturated fat from things like butter and cream and whatnot with these plant oils is beneficial. We also have biomarker data. So what's really interesting about that is you can actually measure the amount of certain fats like linoleic acid, which is found in in a lot of these vegetable oils um, in your tissue. So in your fat tissue, in your blood cells, um, and those with higher levels have lower risk of cardiovascular disease and other events um, and, and total mortality. And so um, this is just adding to what we already know. It's it's really no different. There are a few studies that have serious flaws in them that might have painted a different picture. But I mean, we've discussed them ad nauseum at this point. You make a good point that it would be easy for someone who's just sort of taking in information online to think that the consensus is changing and experts are flip-flopping a lot. But that's, that's not the case. The, the consensus kind of, it doesn't change overnight and it's very, it's, it's shaped slowly over decades. And as you say, there's a huge body of evidence that supports the substitution of saturated fat rich foods for, for foods rich in unsaturated fats, particularly polyunsaturated fats. And I, I think one of the main sources of confusion is that you know, a lot of, a lot of the public health recommendations around this kind of, began in the 1980s and since then health people see that health has deteriorated and and there's more obese people than ever and type 2 diabetes is at all times highs and can't reconcile that that recommendations come out but health the incidence of these diseases is greater than ever but I, i think people need to appreciate that one what the government recommends and what people do are are two different things and when you look at the way the diet has changed since 1980 since 1980 there are many other reasons that likely explain why overweight obesity and type 2 diabetes are are all-time highs and in fact if you look at like cardiovascular disease mortality it's actually gone down since the 1980s. So this was something I covered actually in, in a recent episode with Dr. Bill Harris, and, and he stepped through that body of literature that you're talking about, the observational studies, the biomarker observational studies, the randomized controlled trials, the meta-analyses of those randomized controlled trials, the issues with Minnesota coronary experiment and Sydney diet heart study and like the, the, the trans fats within those and some of the other issues. So there's no doubt a very large robust body of evidence that supports this 
the substitution of calories from saturated fat for unsaturated fats. But unfortunately, there still is this very strong, and I would say growing rhetoric online that seed oils are inflammatory, are toxic. And, you know, you only have to look at uh, the recent media around the Steak and Shake franchise, their decision to ditch seed oils for, for beef tallow. That, that has to be based on political and, and kind of online narratives more than science. Oh, absolutely. I, I have no idea what strong evidence they could base. I mean, even moderately strong evidence that they could base that sort of change on. Um, at this point, it has to be just the rhetoric. The only thing that I could think of, and, and this is a question that still uh, people comment on, on various episodes or on my social media, is around deep frying. So someone might say, okay, guys, you know, maybe in these studies, people that are having more plant-based oils are, are doing better, but they're not deep frying their food in seed oils. It's not steak and shake that have a deep fryer out the back and are deep frying their chips all day and reheating these oils over and over and over. Is there a context, is there a type of cooking or heat where saturated fat, saturated fat oils or butter or tallow are better than these polyunsaturated fat rich plant oils see i don't think we have a solid answer to that at this point because i don't think we have out outcome data in that context there is one trial and you'll have to excuse me on the numbers a little bit i, I can't recall exactly but they put put um some oils some seed oils through something like 20 extreme heating and cooling cycles just over and over and over again and then they had people consume them and there were certain markers um Again, I can't recall exactly which markers, but we can say they're pro-inflammatory markers that did go up. Um, you know, does that mean that that uh, instead replacing that with a bunch of saturated fat, even if it's more stable, is that still going to lead to better outcomes because you're increasing things like LDL cholesterol or ApoB? I don't know. I don't know what the net result of that would be at this time. I, I think the conclusion there is that having stuff that has been <laughs> <laughs> fried over and over and over and over again is probably not good for you right Either so way. so yeah so i mean that would be my takeaway and whether or not it's with saturated fats or with vegetable oils i don't think will make a huge difference to be honest i i, I think neither are a great option just by virtue of of eating things like that that are super um uh you know fried and and very calorie dense and often very salty and stuff on top of that all right, we're talking about a context where it's bad versus bad, probably. <laughs> yeah. But but in the context of this study, in the context of the wider body of literature on this, we're talking about the cooking oil that you would use to bake or saute vegetables in at home under a medium heat. You're not you're not deep frying these things, hopefully, and then reheating that oil twenty times at home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean ideally, I, I don't know anyone who, who would do that at their home, so Hopefully not. When it comes to gut health, fiber is absolutely foundational, but not all fiber is created equal. That's why I teamed up with Dr. Will Bolsowitz to create DMN, Daily Microbiome Nutrition from 38 Terra. DMN is a next level complete prebiotic blend designed to nourish your gut with ingredients that are clean, clinically backed, and precisely dosed based on human clinical trials. Alongside five other prebiotics, we included Actazin, a green kiwi fruit powder that has been shown to support regularity and reduce occasional constipation, and Solnol, a resistant potato starch proven to increase key gut bacteria like Bifidobacterium and Akkermansia, while also improving stool consistency and digestive comfort. No fillers, no fluff, just high quality science-backed prebiotics in one easy scoop per day. If you're looking for a simple, effective way to support your gut health alongside a healthy diet, this is it. And for the months of April and May, you can get 25% off your first DMN subscription with the code PROOF at checkout, an exclusive offer for the PROOF community, bigger than any other offer you will see out there. Head to 38terra.com, that's 38tera.com, and use the code PROOF. Glorious poops and a happy gut are just around the corner.